had a fantastic stay in Crocodile Bridge, but all good things must come to an end. Today is moving day, which is always chaos. All of this stuff, some house bits. In Jabari, and on Jabari, she's actually not that heavily loaded at the moment. So we are done at Cocktail Bridge. It was incredible. I love this, love the spot. It's really beautiful. I love how shaded it is. Um, I think it's one of the most underrated camps in the whole of Kruger. We are heading to Birkendal now for four more nights of camping, and then that brings an end to our six week trip in effect. Uh, we are probably going to end up driving back up north because we're meant to be in Limpopo next to do some more pangolin and rhino work. So, yeah, but uh, six weeks in the park. This is our second last camp. A little bit surreal. The next campsite we set up will be the last campsite we set up, but it's been incredible. Bianca is getting tetchy because she saw wild dogs. Well, she saw that there are wild dogs, and so now she wants to get going. And her and Jabari are now being rude. Look, I can make them follow me. Watch. Check, I'm taking Jabari for a walk. <laughs> Welcome to Cougar Park. So we're sitting in between a huge buffalo herd, um, waiting for the big boys at the back to cross the road. It's always super special and it's one of Timmy's favorites to be in between the herd. We haven't been extremely fortunate with buffalo sightings, um, so this is definitely south. in the south. We haven't been extremely fortunate with buffalo sightings. But this big herd definitely makes up for the lack of sightings. Yeah, we saw loads of buffalo in the north, but we haven't seen since since we got down south, which is strange because I know there's still very high numbers in the park. I think it's just the way that it is. We just haven't bumped into them. We've bumped into a couple of dagger bulls by themselves, but not these big herds. These big herds are amazing. Absolutely love it. They end up crossing on both sides of you. It's very cool. Still looking at you as if you owe them money. Yeah. So we moved from Crocodile Bridge to Birkendal today, uh, set up camp and are going out on an afternoon drive. There's been a pack of wild dogs spotted in the area, so we are really hoping that we get lucky again. It feels, um, it almost feels greedy to want to see wild dogs again. We've been so lucky with our sightings, but um, they're the absolute best. So we're going to go look for the pack of wild dogs and uh, see what else we see on the way. Hold thumbs! Is Bianca getting bored of looking for wild dogs yet? No, not at all. I think Bianca might be loving the dogs as much as Tim does. Hey? Yeah. Yeah. It's cause also because she got unbelievable photos the other day at that side thing that you guys would have already seen by now. Follow Bianca Bromman Travel. <laughs> oh, excuse me, no. That's getting edited out. <laughs> <laughs> So we found the Bergendahl pack. This pack is often around this area. They seem to stick stick around here. Um, they're all sleeping under trees. So hopefully we don't have the same situation we had two days in a row earlier in the week when um, they started hunting as we had to run to go to the gate. So we have two and a half hours until the gate closes. So we're just gonna set up camp here. Bees bought a whole bunch of wildlife books recently. It's one of many. She's bought a whole pile of them. Literally, I'm starting to have to restrain her just because of the weight of the books that she's buying. 
<laughs> genuinely, there's, they're starting to take up too much space. There's so many of them. But yeah, so we're gonna read some books, chill out a little bit, wait for the dogs to get active, and then see what happens. So we're playing that same game with the wild dogs again. It is half past five, so we have an hour to photograph them and get back to camp. And they're just starting to get active again, so I don't know if it's just this time of year or just the way they are, but it seems like the timings of the gate is perfectly timed to not see wild dogs in action. and. I know that sounds bold because we did see wild dogs make a kill and that's incredible and I'm not taking away from that at all, but we'd love to see them do it again. <laughs> so we're, we're sitting with the pack, waiting with them. Uh, we'll see what happens. It's a really beautiful pack. They have a lot of white in their markings, which uh, I think is really, really pretty. It makes them look more like painted wolves, which is, um, which is the term that I actually prefer for them. But yeah, they're busy waking up. So hopefully they wake up fast or an impala takes the most unlucky walk of its life and just comes walking down this road. <laughs> we'll see. So they're hunting, they're moving along the road. The whole pack is around us. It's quite amazing, again. There's some of them are. There's Bianca's big big ass camera and there's more on the road in front of us they're, they're definitely hunting so let's hope they're lucky we don't have too long that we can stay with them so again, again yet again Bianca's still looking back to see if the hunt happens without us these roads on the side of the park are so badly corrugated, it drives me insane. That's why you can probably barely hear what I'm saying. Sorry. How's it, man? Straight down the road, we've got dogs. And then uh, on the S119, like on the left, about two k's up, there's an ingwe in the tree. Enjoy. Cheers, guys. That's good bush karma right there. I score Bush Karma points by helping out a Sand Park Ranger and telling him where the sightings are. We saw a big leopard on the way back. Um, so I had to stop and got like literally two or three minutes of photos of him and then kept on going But that two or three minutes is probably gonna make us late and it's not on purpose and it's not intentional So another incredible wild dog sighting We've seen them hunting three times in a row now and I'm not complaining because just seeing wild dogs to me is just incredible I absolutely love them but it would be really great if they could start hunting like 15 minutes earlier tomorrow. <laughs> if we can find them, that is. So yeah, we'll see. We're gonna go looking for them in the morning in that area that they were hunting. Hopefully they've um, denned down somewhere there and then we can go and sit with them again tomorrow afternoon. It seems to be the, the story of the trip so far. So <laughs> I say so far, we've been here for six weeks. It's the story of the trip is following wild dogs and hoping that they do something. But yeah, going back to Bergendal, we've got a beautiful little campsite at Bergendal. It's, I think every campsite after, as I said, B, this is my new favorite campsite, and um, each time it's got better. So, and this will be our last campsite because we have now booked to go back up north, but um, because we're only spending a night or two in each spot, we are staying in safari tents or in cottages because uh, it's just not really worth setting up the whole tent and the whole shebang because we don't have the rooftop at the moment. We're just using a regular tent. Hey, Bee. Hey, It's like a tent. Yeah. The monkeys tore it today a little. Trying to get food. There ain't no food in our tent. There are just some nuts. And now I'm going to bed.
So apparently, on the road that I just took this morning, they just saw leopards sleeping right by the entrance. And then at the water hole that I sat at for 20 minutes, they saw wild dogs on a kill that then were having a fight with hyenas. So, <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I believe in bush karma. Sometimes I just think I'm unlucky, but it happens. I had a beautiful drive. I took some beautiful photos of some clouds. That's in a constellation, but yeah, apparently right behind me, there were some incredible sightings. <laughs> Murphy's Law. So we had a super chill morning around camp. Slow game drive this morning, but uh, slow but beautiful. And we've been doing some work in camp since then. Uh, and now we're gonna have some lunch. B is making delicious steak wraps. Well, they look delicious, certainly. I think they're gonna be delicious. Then we'll head out on a game drive this afternoon. We're hoping to actually meet up with one of the vets from Skakuza to do some work with wild dogs, but um, that's all a little bit up in the air. So. Holding time as it happens, but if it doesn't, we'll just go on a nice drive in the afternoon. Maybe go up to Afsal Trading Post, which is a really nice picnic spot just north of here. We hadn't heard from the vet about the dogs, so we decided to head to one of my favorite spots in the park and then get an early dinner at Afsal Trading Post. Oh, she's pretty. So if you drive north along the S114, there's a little hidden gem. Um, it's actually one of my favorite spots in the entire park. And it's known as the BMET Weir. And uh, basically it's a low level crossing that's right next to the, the Weir's Wall. So you get to be eye level with things happening at water level. 
um, and so it makes for some incredible shots. So the weir seems to have silted up quite a lot, so it's you know quite on the edge of the water like you used to be, but um, I'm sure that will clear out the next time there's a flood in the area. But what a magic little spot this is. It makes for amazing sightings. I mean, we have spent many a day where we just sit here most of the day, and you see a variety of different animals coming in to drink. There's normally hippos or crocodiles. We've got a really big croc in the water right behind us now. But yeah, it's an absolutely magic spot. Not many people know about it. This is one of my top picks for Kruger. A lot of people say hyena or lion, but for me, the quintessential bush sound is the zebra. Like a few of the other Kruger picnic sites, Afsal is not fenced, so you can have some really amazing encounters with wildlife on foot. So this is Kruger showing off again. We have a beautiful herd of buffalo, busy having a mud bath, which is awesome. More buffalo to my left. Zebras, could you? Big head of big herd of Ellie's coming through in the back there. Zebras. There's also there was about ten kudu as well that are just out of frame now. It's on Bianca's side of the car, so she's taking all the photos, which is not fair. And she's using my camera, which is also not fair. But I don't mind, as long as she gets cool shots. This buff having a mud bath are the coolest thing. They're busy drowning themselves in mud, and they still look at you like you stole their money.
Next, we have an incredible day with the state fed from Skakuza, followed by a few more Kruger episodes, and then we're off to Mozambique. Please hit subscribe if you're enjoying our content, and thank you everyone for the continued support.